morning, and my name is Kingwa Kamenchu. I am a journalist and communication professional from Kenya. I'm the founder of Black Star Media, which caters to organizations and professionals in three key sectors, that arts and culture, human rights, and entrepreneurship and innovation. So I'll just very quickly go to the questions asked. So the first is, how would you introduce yourself today? I think, as I have just done. And then, how do people introduce you? So people introduce me as a politician, and that's because some years back I ran for the presidency of the country, and people have never forgotten that. Or well, sometimes I jokingly say people have never forgiven me for that. On a light note. Um, next question is, how would you prefer to introduce yourself or be introduced in the future? I think I would be interested to be introduced as a change maker who uses different mediums and one is a medium of media the other is a medium of politics and community building the other is a medium of entrepreneurship so then the second question is what would it take to transition from your current introduction to the one you prefer in terms of mindset and skill set to a large extent i think i'm already on the journey um, a lot of it is about training confidence building and um, I'm continually um, enrolling in courses in which I need support in a lot of entrepreneurship courses, a lot of um, media development courses. So yes, training would be a big thing. And then third question is, how did you become a part of this program and has it impacted your proposed journey path? So uh, the mentor that was a part of the program, that's Madame Jerry Kabeberi, told me about it. We had hosted her on one of the webinars we've been holding on democracy. And uh, then she mentioned it and, 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 and invited me to apply for it. So um, it's impacted my, my journey in the sense of it's given additional clarity because like I think you've, you've noticed that I have sort of different interests in terms of the media, the politics, entrepreneurship. So it's given me clarity, gave me clarity in terms of how to juggle those, how that to see better how they actually fit in together and they actually do not compete that they are all there's a fusion so i really appreciated that clarity and then what drives you to be who you are today i think just being alive and the kind of passions that i have because i live i follow my passions i i follow my passions and what my spirit tells me gives me conviction about but also my background like my family um my parents were very community oriented and always about um, making the society better. So I think in a very big way that that give, gave me like an unconscious drive to, to, you know, to be this person that's trying to make the world a better place. And then where does your passion for journalism and media come from? Mm, I think in a big way it came, it came from my, my talents and my skills, what I was naturally excelling at versus what I was finding harder. And this is all the way from... Um, secondary school to university so language and communication seemed to be the one thing that I was always called out to give support in to help in um, and so it was almost like the logical progression of things and then um, and then my other passion also because my other obsession is seeing wholeness like I want to see human wholeness I want to see societal wholeness I want to see potential being fulfilled and then how would you describe the media environment you first worked in? So my first job was pretty sheltered and eye-opening. Um, sheltered in the sense of it was a media monitoring organization, so it was a non-profit. Um, we were a very small team of probably less than five. Um, so I didn't, I, I, I wasn't in like the big media houses, so that's why I use the term sheltered. Um, I opened it because I was working for an individual that was just very, very much about change, very, very idealistic, very change driven. Um, and he, he, I, I learned a lot from him about um, seeing the world in a particular way. So I think that that also really shaped me in a very big way. The, 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 just seeing the attempt, even just the attempt to be able to try to do something, because he was all about making the situation for journalists better, monitoring freedom of expression, rather the organization, not the individual, monitoring freedom of expression in the in the in the in the, in the region in a very passionate way. His name is David McCarley. Um, a lot of uh, journalists know him, very, very highly respected journalist. Um, and so that was um, quite eye opening, um, sheltered and idealistic. And then 
how would how would you describe the current media environment you work in? Is it different from why when you started, and why do you say that? I think I would say that the changes are mostly in the fact that there's a lot more women. Um, I think I mean obviously nothing compared to the difference is not as vast as it was in the 70s or the 80s. But now I see like women all like it's it's such a normal thing. Um, also, I think quite interestingly is the different formats and platforms like digital, the, the explosion, because when I was starting out, that was um, around 2007 when I got my first job. It was like those initials, like only you could only if you're a journalist, you're only a writer or you're, a TV, you're on TV or you're on radio. But now it's like everything. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself. So there's that there's that fluidity as well. And then what are the assumptions, misconceptions about African women working in media? What are the assumptions or misconceptions African women make when joining the profession? Uh, to be honest, I don't think I have much to say on that one. So I'll just go to the next. And then what are the most common challenges women journalists face and which ones have you experienced? How did you overcome them? I think for me, I'd give the challenge of trusting my voice and vision and really believing in it. Um, and... Uh, how did I overcome this? I think every day it's about allowing yourself, following, following that voice, following that, that vision um, and, and trusting, trusting it continually. In your country, what do you see as the greatest threat to women journalists in accessing or holding positions of power? How might they be overcome? So my answer is probably not going to be very, um, it's going to be a bit, I don't know if to use that controversial maybe, but I actually I would look at it that the challenge would be in themselves because when a person has conviction and, and self-belief and they are just on fire about what they're doing, they're unstoppable. Nothing can stop them, whether it is their gender, whether it is their race, whether it is their um, economic background. So it's all about, actually, I would actually say it's all about themselves. But then also I do understand that because we grow up hearing voices, hearing voices, um, that really try to devalue us as women. So that is what then makes it a challenge. So for me, part of the solution moving forward is that we need to do something about the culture, about the culture and what it teaches women that they are and what they could be um, for us to actually see our women in media and our women in all spheres attaining the power and getting to the, to the positions and the spheres that they would be interested in. And then... In a global context, how many women-led media platforms contribute towards the development of solutions-oriented narratives for Africa? So I'd say in Kenya, I know um, I know about African women, African women and child feature services, um, and it does a lot in terms of the development narrative for Africa, so giving solutions. Also, the Association of Media Women in Kenya, I know that they have occasional publications. I know about the Gender Media Network, uh, GEMnet. Um, uh, and then uh, outside of Kenya, I know about I know about Fem Fem Right in Uganda. I know about Femnet. I think it's the online organization. Um, and also in Egypt, there's a, there's a I came across uh, an editor called Fatima Farag. She runs. Wellad El Balad for media services, which does a lot in terms of community media. And then also myself, my, my organization, uh, Black Star Media, which is women, women led, woman led, um, that it does contribute a lot towards the development solutions oriented narrative for the continent. And then the 12th question is, what opportunities does having women in leadership present for you, the people you work or converse with in your country at large? For me, the idea of women in leadership is about the opportunity to have different perspectives, um, to have more humanity, um, more sensitivity, because women are more sensitive and um, that forces them to become a lot more responsive and humane towards people around them. And also, so it would then be seeing, it would then be the opportunity of a more humane society. The 13th is uh, how might upcoming women journalists learn from your experiences? What is your wish for women in media? I think just the whole idea of self-belief, but uh, self-belief, following your dream and your vision, but very importantly, as part of this, would be structuring it. And when I say structuring it, I mean um, having the dream, but putting the foundation so that your feet are on the ground. I say that because 
dreamers, of which I am, a lot of dreamers, our feet are not on the ground, and that's very necessary because we're the ones who are bringing the ideas to the to the world, to, to reality. So structuring in terms of learning, learning what they need to do to be able to entrench the vision that they want to see. Like for my, for me, I've had to do a lot of entrepreneurship courses, a lot of media development courses, a lot of um, management courses because I'm running an organization. Um, even money management, like it's a continual learning process. So that's 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 what maybe um, upcoming women journalists who want to set up their own outfits might learn from my experiences. The importance of structure. Like every dream, I tell them this: systems and structure. We might rail against them, but they are the best thing for us. What is my wish for women in media? My wish for women in media is to liberate the feminine. What do I mean by liberating the feminine? I mean liberating the voice of the feminine energy and um, there's a whole psychological as understanding of the masculine and the feminine but the feminine energy is about nurturing care sensitivity love humaneness humanity um the, mas the masculine energies are about power about aggression about um you know just yeah so if you want to read more about that you can check out carl Jung. he talks a lot about the masculine and the feminine um, energies. So my wish is for women in media to liberate the feminine, to 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 approach their work with a more feminine-centric perspective rather than approaching it from a very masculine perspective, which we have normalized and which we might not always recognize. And then how may your success be replicated in other media houses in your country or on the continent? I think same thing, mentoring, coaching, um, and then number 15 is what three issues or recommendations should be addressed to ensure progressive advocacy towards a women first policy of female forward movement. Um, so the three things I would say would be consciousness in terms of consciousness among the women to begin with. Uh, the second thing would be there would need to be a goal beyond just women first and female forward movement. There, there would need to be something bigger than this. Otherwise, it will not be able to otherwise the energies will not be able to mobilize and then the third thing would be community building bringing women together to just work together partner um towards this particular goal that they need to work towards and then the last question is what wisdom do you wish to pass on to generations to come um for me it would be that to tell them that they hold the power to create their own realities that um, as long as they are conscious and aware about it. And I, I say that because I think in life, a lot of the time we think everyone else is to blame, everyone else should change, everyone else should do something, um, but we don't look at ourselves. And I know there's a quote, I don't know if it was Gandhi or who, who says that anytime you're pointing a finger, there's a thumb is pointing back at you. So that you hold the power to create your reality as long as you are aware of it, of it um, and as long as you are consciously harnessing it. So that's my take on this. Uh, just lastly, to thank the FNF Foundation for the opportunity um, and the team, um, Veni and Fungisai. It was amazing. I was very honored. Just a beautiful, loving group, um, very intimate. Um, so thank you for setting that up and giving us that space where we could be ourselves, where we could be human in a public space. Um, and also Angelica Beberi for the amazing work that she did. Um, just really getting in, uh, helping us get intimate with ourselves. So thank you very much. And I wish you all an amazing and wonderful day.